Hey guys, today we are going to take a look at the swing of US PGA champ Justin Thomas. So Justin is most definitely a very much a modern golf swinger. He uses the ground a lot. He obviously hits the ball very, very long. So first thing is to admire truly is his setup's absolutely amazing. Okay. No longer is it in vogue anymore to kind of have this sucked in lower back look where it used to be scooped out through here. We can see now very much that this is a flat lower back right here. Shoulders slightly slumped over. The thing I love is no longer is the chin very high, but he's looking a lot more down out of his eye sockets towards the ball rather than down towards his nose, which puts a lot of pressure through the top of that spine. So if I look at what kind of where it was with somebody like Adam Scott a few years ago, we tended to see that that was a lot different in terms of the neck area. So what we see now is first move away here, classic one piece takeaway. We can see angles are perfectly held, arms extension of the body, the club is full extension of the belly button and we can see here, leading edge of the golf club is an extension of the spine and it is perfectly parallel to it. So this is perfect. From here, club goes straight up through the middle of the forearm, hasn't gone under it at all. Club face absolutely perfectly neutral. What we see then is, as he continues going towards the top of the backswing, we can now see that those arms go up on the body. Okay, so he's got fairly long arms for his torso, and we can see now that his arms are up and in front of his body. So this is one thing that I see a lot of great players or a lot of the new players able to do. They get the arms in front of the body. So Behind would mean that his arms would be kind of somewhere over here. That would make it really difficult with his speed to deliver the club consistently. So he's got those arms up in front of the body. Let's have a look at it from the front view here with driver. Pretty wide there on the stance. Obviously, he's getting himself really in position to launch it. So we can see now, okay, he loads that right side, but there's not been any sway. I mean, we can really see that that pelvis is really neutral right here. And it's, it's just rotating, okay? Left knee's come in a little bit more with the driver than it would do with the iron. It's just a natural thing. We can see a huge, huge shoulder turn right here. Obviously, advantage of youth there. Not a lot of us could get as big a shoulder turn as Justin Cam right here. But we can see that this shoulder turn is not leading to a long back swing. The driver swing is still, if anything, just short of parallel. It's definitely not beyond parallel. Also, from down the line, what we see... Club face really neutral and parallel to that left arm and pretty flat left wrist right there. Okay, so that's a really good strong position. Now what we'll see here is he makes a, he makes a shift over, okay, but okay, that left knee is moving outwards. We can now see how that left knee is separating away in this direction. Okay, and now what he's going to do is he's really going to pressure the ground. So he pressures the ground a lot using that ground floor so he's pushed into the floor and now he's using that energy from the floor which is pushing him up and back and it's why we would see with a driver we'll see that that left heel comes off the floor now, that's not something you want to really try to do with an iron but if you push so aggressively into the floor with a driver and you're launching it up off the tee you'll see now he pushes up and back so he all of his energy is coming back up out the floor okay it's almost airborne there. You know, the only thing that's touching there are the tiptoes of each foot. Then it goes back down and we can see he's absolutely pounding it, okay? Hits it miles. And you'd say, you know, for his size, probably one of the longest on tour. Now, the difference with the iron, okay, here's a great bit. Those arms have been in front, delivering massively in front right here, okay? And even despite the fact that that lower body is very aggressive, that right elbow is on the front of that right hip here. It's right on the front part of it, okay? Arms in front of the body. He then can deliver the club through. There's no flipping over, okay? Although the right arm's extending, that club face isn't closing much. We then see that everything can rotate through with that body. And we saw there with that iron, very different footwork on that way through. We can see here that that toe is rolling over and the heel is in the floor a lot more it's not jumping off the floor so that footwork is unique to his driver and that is one of the things that he uses to create that power so guys we're going to go outside and have a look at 
just in leg action and see how you can perhaps start to incorporate a bit of a squat and how he uses the floor to get maximum energy with his driver. So here we are on the back championship tee here on 7th at Highley. Okay, back to the old school with the old school Titleist 983K driver. Was a driver back in the day. Anyway, what we're looking at is Justin massively uses the ground, really, really gets so much energy out of that floor. Well, what we're talking about is when he gets it to that top of the backswing here, that left knee separates and he goes like this. And then, then the right starts to close the gap. But because of how he is really pushing into the floor so aggressively through that left leg, when it is separating here, he's going to use that force and that's going to push him back. And up. So obviously he's hitting very up on the driver. Trackman numbers say that he's over five degrees. I think it's around 6.3, but don't quote me on that one, but it's definitely over five. So he's hitting up on that ball, maxing out the launch angle, which obviously is going to give him low spin. Longest driver this week when he won. So we are looking at that left knee is going out. He's using that energy from that floor, pushing back and up this way. So what that will do is, if he uses that energy from the floor, it's a ground force reaction from the toe box. It means that he uses that floor force to push up and back like this. Great for the driver because therefore he is hitting more up on the ball. So he pushes up and back. We see the ang spine angle goes backwards. Great for launching the driver on the up and really getting a low spin rate. So what that would tend to do is you're still going to have the space that we highlighted on the video. Okay because he's not going like this, because obviously he was so trapped there, he couldn't play from that position. What we also saw is quieter footwork on the iron. He's not trying to hit it anywhere near as hard and he's not hitting up on it. We know he gets down on it, taking a divot. So the footwork's completely different. The iron, very much in this direction, early into the heel, covering, staying on top of the shot. Whereas that driver, big time this way. So why, if you want to give it a go, not encouraging you to jump up and start jumping out the floor, but what happens is I start down, push very aggressively into the left toe, and then use that energy in the floor to push up. Okay, we know for a fact that if the left shoulder goes up and the handle rises, that incorporates maximum force into the club head, increasing that club head speed. Give it a go, feel the energy into the toe, push up and back, really giving that good launch angle, maybe a bit like Justin Thomas. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so and talk with you again very soon.